Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the use of Andrew Hay's process macro in order to test for mediation um, using several different models. Uh, basically, the process macro can be uh, downloaded from this website right here. It's useful. It, it can be used with both SPSS and SAS. And uh, the demonstrations that I'm going to provide are uh, going to uh, rely on SPSS. So, uh, first of all, uh, let's look at uh, a couple of mediational models that we're going to uh, test using the macro. And before we get started, let me just say that I've drawn out uh, these models using the Amos program. And it's essentially a structural equation modeling program, but has a really nice graphical user interface. So I just decided to draw them out here uh, before running um, our analysis through uh, the process macro. Um, you'll notice that uh, model one is essentially a simple mediation model where we have um, an independent variable, uh, we'll just designate it as, as X, a dependent variable designated as Y, and then we'll have a mediating variable, we'll designate that as M. So this is a simple mediational model, and um, which is really pivoting off of uh, the presentation that um, that uh, Barron and Kinney provide in their article uh, back from 1986. And um, I'm going to kind of pivot off just a, a little bit of, of their article just to kind of highlight different components of the mediation model. And then really from there, um, we, can, we can sort of add on uh, and extend uh, the simple model uh, into more complex models. And uh, so I'm going to show you the simple mediation model using um, process and then pivot off of that and go into a couple of other uh, possible models. So within the context of um, a mediation model, you'll see we have three uh, manifest variables or observed variables. Uh, and within the model, we've got uh, single-headed arrows. And Within uh, me, uh, this kind of model, the single-headed arrows are basically reflecting direct effects or proposed direct effects of one variable on the other. So in this particular case, we've got a demonstration where I'm going to use, um, uh, we're going to assume that we have student-level data. And uh, we're going to look at students' mastery goals in relation to uh, their levels of achievement and uh, whether or not uh, the effects of mastery goals on achievement um, uh, are mediated through their levels of interest. So um, you can see then that we've got three direct effects that are being laid out in this particular uh, drawing. Uh, and we have essentially this path right here. This is path A. We, got, we have path B over here uh, reflecting uh, the proposed uh, causal relationship between interest and achievement. And then we have path C and path C prime reflecting the proposed causal relationship between mastery and achievement. So um, those are all the those three are direct effects within the model. Um, now, when we are looking at the relationship between mastery and achievement, we're not solely interested in the direct effects, but we want what we're essentially doing is testing whether the effect of mastery on achievement may in part flow through a mediating variable. So in other words, if mastery has um, has a impact on the variation in achievement, or excuse me, in interest and interest has an uh, impact on the variation in achievement, uh, we might say, we might consider uh, this, the effect of mastery on achievement as flowing through interest. So interest being our mediating variable. So we can calculate, so essentially that would reflect an indirect effect uh, within the model. So an indirect effect of mastery on achievement via the mediator uh, interest. So to calculate the indirect effect within the model, all it is is just essentially uh, multiplying the coefficient for path A and B uh, together. So we would just say path A times path B coefficients will produce the indirect effect. And so when we're testing for mediation, it's not just enough to test the, the individual uh, paths within the model or the individual direct effects for statistical significance. We also want to test the, in, the uh, indirect effect because that's, you know, essentially what we're uh, hypothesizing is that the indirect effect is, is significantly different from zero. And um, so that's, so we want to test that out. Um, now, in the old days, uh, we might have spent a little bit more time using something uh, called the Sobel test, um, where essentially um, it, it tends to be uh, less um, um, 
encouraged now. Uh, nowadays, we utilize really more uh, along the lines of bootstrap uh, procedures in order to uh, test for the indirect effect. And without getting too far into the weeds, basically um, the the idea is is that with the Sobel test, um, it it sort of makes the assumption that uh, the indirect effect would be normally distributed within uh, the population. So essentially the sampling distribution of the indirect effect would follow a normal distribution. Uh, unfortunately, that's not always the case. And um, so bootstrapping is sort of the, the more modern uh, approach to, um, to um, uh, 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 coming up with standard errors for the indirect effect. So at any rate, um, so what we're going to do, oh, by the way, also, let me just kind of note that, um, you know, kind of pivoting off of Barron and Kenny, um, the, basic the basic strategy uh, that they discussed uh, in their 86 paper uh, was uh, to essentially um, to, to uh, demonstrate uh, mediation. You really first started off by testing path C, uh, and path C was, uh, that was kind of step one, I guess you could say. And path C just basically is computed by regressing the dependent variable achieve onto the independent variable mastery. And so what they basically argued is, is that at a minimum, mastery and achieve ought to exhibit a significant relationship. Then step two would essentially involve um, regressing interest onto the mastery variable and so calculating path A and so that would be a simple regression and if that was significant that would be kind of condition two met and then uh, the step three would be a multiple regression where you're regressing path B onto uh, excuse me achieve onto both interest and mastery so essentially carrying out a uh, multiple regression and you would be computing path B and path C prime. C prime would essentially be the, the direct effect of mastery on achievement controlling for interest. Path B is the direct effect of interest on uh, achievement controlling for mastery. And so if path B uh, was uh, statistically significant then that would be um, um, evidence of uh, a mediational effect uh, that's taking place. Um, Really, that issue of the zero-order relationship uh, indicating statistical significance is, um, as a requirement, is really kind of downplayed uh, nowadays because um, there are situations where you can have um, a uh, essentially a zero relationship between uh, the independent variable and the dependent variable, um, and um, and still uh, have evidence of mediation. So I'm not going to go really into the weeds on that, just letting you know that that condition is really uh, more, much more tenuous and um, nuanced than, than um, you know, kind of the original presentation. But um, at any rate, uh, let's, let's run a basic um, simple mediational model using the process macro. So I'm going to go into uh, SPSS here. I've got um, my variables of interest. And uh, so I've got achieve, mastery, and interest. So what I'm going to do is go to analyze and go to regression, go to process. So remember that you've got to download the macro first and install it for you to be able to run your analysis. Um, so I'm going to click on process. And, um, and I've already kind of set it up, but I'll reset it and show you uh, kind of the steps. So I'm going to put achieve in the dependent box or, or the Y variable box. Mastery will go in the X variable box and interest will go in this box for mediator uh, where it says model number. Um, you know, essentially, right here you've got, um, uh, there are a number of templates associated with the, um, the macro and these are actually des uh, demonstrated in uh, the book uh, that you see right here, Intro Introduction to Mediation, Moderation, and Conditional Process Analysis. And by the way, it's a great book. So um, I would I would totally recommend uh, you consider uh, getting it if you're interested in um, uh, modeling data using mediation and moderation. So with mo model four, what we have right here is um, the basic uh, triangle that I was showing you. Uh, this is a conceptual di tri uh, diagram with X predicting Y, and the uh, the um, influence of X on Y is flowing in part through the mediator. So, uh, and when the use of the term in part uh, is reflected in the idea that we still also have a direct effect that's reflected in this era right here. So, um, you know, if this relationship uh, right here, the kind of the C prime 
was uh, zero, and uh, you know the indirect effect was statistically significant. That and that would indicate that we have full mediation. But if this C prime path was uh, significant uh, along with the um, indirect effect, then that would be evidence of partial mediation. So at any rate, uh, we also have the statistical diagram down here. Uh, that Hayes lays out as well. And so this is just reflecting the idea that, you know, we have X predicting the mediator, and this is uh, the prediction error, uh, and then X and the mediator predicting Y, and there's the prediction error here. So we're going to use model four to run our analysis. So I'm going to click on model number and go down to four. Now you'll see that uh, the default confidence interval is a 95%. And we also have a default 5,000 5, bootstrap sample. So this is how we're going to generate um, the uh, standard error and, um, and ultimately form the confidence intervals uh, around the um, uh, sample estimate of the indirect effect. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll click on OK. And uh, you'll see it takes a couple of seconds for uh, the uh, program to run. But here we go. We have our outcome variable. Uh, interest. So this is essentially reflecting the relationship between mastery and interest. So that's essentially path A. Um, and so you can see the regression coefficient is 0.54 and um, you know it's indicating statistical significance at the 0.05 level. So path A um, is statistically significant. So in other words, uh, it, um, our data are consistent with the um, notion that mastery uh, exerts a predictive effect um, on interest. Um, then we have our outcome variable um, being achieved, and so this is the multiple regression component uh, that I was telling you about within Barron and Hayes, Barron, uh, uh, Barron and Kinney's uh, discussion. And so we've got mastery and interest, so essentially this coefficient right here is the direct effect, so that's C prime path that I was telling you about. Um, and uh, then we also have, um, we have path B right here, which is this one here. So you can see that uh, essentially our C prime path, the direct effect of mastery on achievement um, is statistically significant and uh, path B is statistically significant as well. So um, we have some evidence or some consistency with the idea that we have um, a mediational relationship or a mediated relationship. But let's go down a little further because we want to test out the indirect effect. So the indirect effect is, you'll see down here, it says indirect effect of X on Y. We have the effect right here. There's the uh, bootstrap uh, standard error. And uh, so you can see the indirect effect is positive. So that's indicating that uh, we have a positive indirect effect of mastery on achieve via the mediator uh, interest. So this is the mediator right here. And what we have are the um, our con uh, confidence intervals. So this is the 95% confidence interval for the effect of, um, of mastery uh, on, or the indirect effect of mastery on achieve. And so the null hypothesis is that the indirect effect is equal to zero. Um, so if the indirect effect uh, of uh, the null hypothesis, uh, if it falls uh, between the lower and the upper bound, then we would uh, maintain the null hypothesis and infer that the indirect effect is uh, is essentially um, zero within the population. If zero falls outside of the bounds, as it does right here, then we would infer that um, the indirect effect is significantly different from zero within the population. And that is obviously the case within this particular demonstration. So that, that's uh, essentially um, our uh, um, simple mediation model uh, in a nutshell. That's what we have basically found. Now we can also test another, another model where we have uh, mediation through multiple mediators. And we can still use uh, the model four template uh, uh, in process. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to add in anxiety as a second mediator. So we still have interest. We have anxiety, and um, both of, of these are serving as mediators. And so we could obviously continue to add in mediators between mastery and achievement. It's just that now we've got uh, two indirect um, effects that would be reflected. We have essentially the indirect effect of mastery on achievement through interest, and then also through anxiety. And we still have the direct effect right here. So um, 
what we'll do in this particular case is I'm going to go to uh, the program again, go to Analyze Regression, and go down to Process. In this case, I'm going to move Anxiety over to the Mediators box as well. So now, when I run the analysis, like I said, it takes a second to, to run through, but um, here we go. So in this particular case, we've got, again, we've got mastery, uh, in this case, in relation to interest. So, uh, you, know, there, you know, that's a relationship between our independent variable and, and the mediator interest. So yes, it's still statistically significant. Uh, now you can see we have the, uh, the effect of mastery on anxiety, uh, our other mediator, and so you can see there's a negative coefficient and it's statistically significant. So uh, basically mastery is significantly related to both mediators within the model. Then you can see that we have our uh, outcome variable being achieved and now we have a regression uh, model where we have mastery, interest, and anxiety serving as predictors of achieve. So you can see that uh, you know this is kind of this is basically still our C prime and that so the direct effect of mastery on um, on achievement after controlling for interest and anxiety is still statistically significant. We see that uh, that um, the uh, interest relationship to anxiety is, is statistically significant. So this is a relationship between the mediator interest and anxiety that's significant. And then when we look at the relationship between ang the mediator anxiety and um, achieve, you can see that that's not statistically significant. So. Um, and when we scroll down a little bit further, we can look at the indirect effects. And uh, right here, you can see that we have the uh, indirect effect of mastery on achievement flowing through the interest variable. It's still positive. Uh, there's, again, our bootstrap standard error. And when we look at, uh, you know, when we uh, look to see if the null, null value of zero falls between the lower and uh, the upper bound, we see that uh, the indirect effect of mastery on achievement uh, via interest is statistically significant. But when we look at it with respect to anxiety, uh, we have, this is our um, coefficient here, and you can see that zero falls be, uh, between the lower bound of negative 0 0.0199 and the upper bound of 0 0.0534. So basically, uh, within our model, we have evidence that, first of all, we, we, you know, we have um, a significant indirect effect uh, of mastery on achievement via uh, the interest variable, but not the anxiety variable. And we still have a statistically significant direct effect um, of uh, mastery on achievement. So basically within this particular, the second model right here, this is essentially uh, mediation involving multiple mediators. And it turns out that only this route uh, is statistically significant. And we still have the direct route here. So we, we essentially have uh, kind of a partial mediation model uh, where the where the mediation is occurring through interest. Um, you might also refer to this as parallel mediation.